2022 with his take of Gogar Yagma finding himself here in the top eight once again of our modern events with his version of Gogar Yagmoth. A deck has changed quite a bit, I'd say, in those years, uh, but the core of Undying Creatures in Yagmoth remains strong and persistent as there's two copies in our top four. Facing off against Harrison Canfer on Jund Creativity, number 33 on our leaderboard is Harrison Canfer looking to solidify his leaderboard position a little bit more with his result here, and I'm sure that will be the case once the leaderboard gets updated and we get a look at that uh, tomorrow, but has some work left to do here today. With that, David McDarby, you're playing this matchup. We've seen a lot of Yogmoth today. This deck looks to be very strong in the current state of modern. If you're facing down against creativity, how do you like your matchup if you're in Christmas C? Yeah, generally, I, th I think it's pretty good. Now, there are six different deck lists in the top eight of today. The only repeat, the only re or seven different, the only repeat was two copies of Golgari Yogmoth. So it seems pretty mm -hmm. good. Even with a cursed totem on the front side, you know, Donnie Smith will still get there. So uh, Christopher, Chris, Chris, Chris's deck list of Golgar Yargmoth is basically normal stuff you'd see. There aren't any one rings in here. Uh, he's got an extra soul cauldron for that, you know, run back, combo from the graveyard, Gris kind of crazy stuff. Also, you know, copy of Endurance, Strangler Geist, and the one copy of Honest Rutstein to just be another way to tutor up by maybe get a creature back, maybe get your Gris back or your Yargmoth back or what have you. And then your spells cost less. So, like, you know, you're kind of just normal green, black. Green, black, gold are things. Meanwhile, uh, Harrison has brought Jun creativity. We say Jun, we really mean <laughs> mostly mono red. Um, like you got your fables, your bitter reunions, your uh, you know ways to bring things back. Then uh, four archons only creates your deck. Uh, four random sixes, really the only green creature. But uh, Harrison has shown up with two pick your poisons, which actually aren't super great against the Yogmoth deck. Like maybe you tag a cauldron. And that's fine, but like it's not like hitting a, a ley line because, like, you know, ley line of the guild pack with sign of the sign of the earth dragon that was like the big shtick. Like, oh my gosh, it's like, did you know, <laughs> everyone has loaded, picked their poison and brought pick your poison, uh, the MKM card, not the uh, universe mystery booster card to this tournament. Yeah. And of course, the deck also has four copies that persist because, like, maybe sometimes you just discard your archon and then you reanimate it. So it's mostly monorail with a couple reanimates and some renaissances. And here we go. Yeah, interesting to see the Persist build kind of making a comeback. I think that build had more or less kind of fallen out of favor from my understanding of the Junk Creativity deck, but Harrison Camp are quite an impressive run with four copies of Persist, and like you said, the Persist uh, pick your poison uh, in the main decks as well. Have to like that call a little bit, I mean, given his performance number three overall in top eight here, which of course means he was on the play as uh, they're off. Just an Arid Mesa for Harrison Camper into Turn One to and delighted halfway for Chris Smith. Very iconic start, I'd say now, post Lord of the Rings for this Yawgmoth deck and has given it a lot more game against some of the fair decks. Not likely to matter too much here. Not a flood of counter spells from this Jund Creativity deck. Yeah, I mean, the Jund, Jund Creativity doesn't have counter spells, but it does have eight, eight one mana ways to bolt this bird. So uh, <laughs> it, it won't be this turn as we're going to the theater for the weekend to see what's in our future, what, what show they're playing at the, at the Rockus Theater. But I imagine this halfling won't live for too long. Um, you know, otherwise, um, it does have two toughness, so it does dodge the Rin and Six in Harrison's deck and any Argus Bowmasters out there, which is one reason why we keep seeing a turn one from all the... If you're playing a green deck, you're probably playing... For and like it's not a splash, and you're playing a main color, you're probably playing four to light and half this because it is so good against you know everything. All these pingers really very hostile to X ones. We you know kind of think about yeah, here's bolt the bird, bolt the the halfling, lots more, lots more better. happens in the shire, as you yeah. say. <laughs> a little better than prismatic really ending the halfling, <laughs> but like you know, bolt the halfling, that's a little, little better than that. Um, that, sure. that's all right it feels like i don't know it just feels more hateful than bolting a bird it's like i don't know people like hunt birds or whatever and because halflings have like a half like feels like sapiens creatures, creatures. Yeah. You know, they save the know, world feels, from destruction you know like feels more particularly cruel especially because like delightful it's just having a good time you're just like just, blowing yeah. it up it's just horrible. horrible but chris but you know as we said there are always more halflings in the shire and chris 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 did bring <laughs> another halfling and a hierarch to his side so you can bolt where you bolt one two more birds will replace it um so then uh, oh, Chris will be able to play. Now. Yeah, now Chris can play Yogmoth next turn or whatever he wants. Honestly, he's got he got in, in, all the men. The, the world. world is his oyster. As another rock is there, I think every land in play for Harrison Canford right now is a surveil land. Really highlighting how powerful these lands can be in the right shell. Uh, has a total of four present in his deck. Does Harrison Canford has three of them in play right now? Two theaters and one commercial district. Has done a lot of surveilling. Graveyard filled up despite casting a single spell in the form of Lightning Bolt. And here comes four mana. Have to imagine this looks pretty Yogmoth shaped to me, and it sure is. It's mm -hmm. Yogmoth Grand Physician. 
Uh, no land played yet. It's going to be Dryad Arbor. So that represents three cards. But also more importantly, Yawgmoth actually makes comboing pretty difficult, right? Dwarven Mine, not really the card you want to reach for. Yeah, it doesn't stick around much. Yeah, it doesn't stick around much. So this Yawgmoth is is a big game for Chris. He played he's got three mana creatures and a Yawgmoth. And, you know, uh, Harrison didn't have a... Does, can't combo earlier than turn three because you have to have a creature and, and, and a creativity. So just got to slow down phase of the game. And Bitter Ordeal and Yawgmoth is about as good as you can get. But, like, now Chris can just, like, draw some more cards. But it sound, looks like Chris maybe has another Yawgmoth in his hand because he let all his... He let, that Yawgmoth die without drawing another card by cashing in this Mana of Dork for a card. So we're saying this Mana of Dork is more powerful to me than a uh, thing. And yep, uh, Christopher is casting Inspired Creativity because he got a Dwarf token from the uh, Dwarven Mine without a Yawgmoth to cut down that Dwarf in his prime. So uh, we're doing the combo in Double Creativity, hitting a creature or artifact, and then getting the only creature in Harrison's deck, Archon of Cruelty. Yeah, we see this style of combo with these kinds of polymorph effects a lot over the years. They printed a lot of them, and Indomitable Creativity happens to be the best of the bunch because you could do it X times and target X things. But of course, as we mentioned, it was important for uh, Harrison Camford to be able to pick off the Yawgmoth and Incept. He was able to do that thanks to Bitter Triumph, which opened the door for turn four, the Dwarven Mine into Indomitable Creativity, into Archon of Cruelty. So now this is, you know, of course, the prized hit from Modern Horizons 2. Uh, that one's going to make Chris sacrifice... A creature, discard a card, do all this kinds of stuff. It's going to threaten to kill him really, really quickly. And, of course, Harrison Camper gets to draw, draw a card, gain some life and all that stuff. And Chris, you can see, was pretty close to the chest with the Yawgmoth stuff because his mana situation was set up where he only had two lands. And, yeah, now, as a result, doesn't have enough mana to get anything done, knows that he is dead to the Archon, and a very quick game number one over between these two players. A flawless execution, I'd say, from Harrison Camper, who managed to kill two creatures and then combo and that was it right like did so much of these surveillance really showing that you don't need these cantrips like we've seen a lot of that stuff fall to the wayside because you can just spend the turns with your uh surveillance instead don't actually have to put these cards in your deck and then there's still mountains for your dwarven mind you're able to combo so harrison camp for putting on a little bit of a show there i'd say yeah so uh chris chris knew the rise of the wall he had to play gris that turn to kill the archon otherwise back to the drawing board and that's exactly who we're going to go as well so let's take a look at Christopher Smith's Golgari Yawgmoth sideboard. He's got three Pick Your Poison, very popular nowadays, two Fatal Pushes, two Thoughtseizes, two Full Minded Mages, and then a bunch of Singletons, Scavenging Use, Terra Sunder, Endurance, Reclamation Sage, Force of Vigor, and Frexine Metamorph. Break, what do you think Chris is going to want to bring against this evil, evil combo deck? <laughs> so, I, like, honestly, I don't think you want to go crazy with the sideboarding. Like, you can reach for um, things like Thoughtseize, because obviously this is a combo mirror. You do actually want to be able to Thoughtseize to, to clear the way for Yawgmoth in, as far as removal spells go, or just remove a creativity. Whatever the texture is, Thoughtseize is going to be good in the style of a, of a matchup. Um, and beyond that, you can respect some of the removal spell stuff if you want, because that's one of the best ways to stop yourself from getting quick combo, like we just saw. You have to rely on Yawgmoth as your removal primarily if you want to pick off a, a dwarf in response to some kind of creativity targeting. Uh, you might be able to reach for fatal pushes and stuff like that in order to really enable that. I don't think you really want to fight this deck on the axis of um, like a grindy game. But as I mentioned, this is actually like a reanimator style setup. So because of that, that one gets worse, and you might actually, that plan gets a little bit worse. So you actually might want to reach for your, like, Graveyard Hate instead in the form of, like, the one of Scavenging Ooze, the one of Endurance. That way you're not going crazy, but you can tutor it up. Uh, you already have an Endurance in the main deck, but you can tutor it up or naturally draw things like Endurance. Put some pressure on, do some good blocking, and also clear away any Archons that might be hanging out in the graveyard to get persisted back. So that axis is something that Chris is going to know about. Again, open deck lists here in the top eight, which means that they know each other's decks, they know each other's sideboards. Uh, I think you can make some adjustments there. And some of the sorcery speed stuff, like I, I really want to call out Grist. I think these cards are pretty weak in the matchup because the one one's easy to pick off and the removal is not instant speed like you want it to be. So you have some easy cuts and I think you can decide what direction you want to go after the thought seasons. Those are the slam dunks. After that, some number of pushes and graveyard hate look appealing to me. Great. That makes sense to me, too. All right. <laughs> Let's go on to uh, Harrison's Junk Creativity deck and check out his sideboard and what he's going to bring here in the semifinals of the Energy Fantasy Series here in Indianapolis, Indiana, where I grew up until I was 11 years old. Big Gen Con fan. So uh, Harrison's <laughs> got three Trastodon, three Thought Seas, two Strike at Riches, two Surgical Extractions, two Veil of Summers, and then an Immortal the Aeon's Torn, one Pick Your Poison, because he's already got two main deck, and one Sundering Titan. Uh Junk Creativity Expert Drake Sessler, what do you think you can bring <laughs> in for this matchup? 
I'm not much of an expert on the deck, but I can tell you the Veil of Summers jump out to me as good against cards like Thoughtseize and, of course, the Yog moth combo itself. That's something that looks appealing to me in, in that regard. You don't really have to worry about counterspells, but, you know, you really do want to just have those to cover either for your own dwarf, like you could use it proactively, um, and you could also use it in response to it, thought seasons and things like that. Those jump out to me as being like just fine upgrades. Beyond that, I don't know how many changes you want to make to your like archons. Like obviously them sacrificing creatures not that big of a deal, but the flying matters. So I don't think you really want to reach for like Terracidons in any capacity. You're not trying to blow up lands against the amulet or anything like that. Um, and Emrakul kind of, Emrakul and Sundering Titan in the same vein just don't really look like the cards you want to reach for as far as adjusting your uh, threats that you can return to play go. Uh, so beyond that, you know, maybe you want to strike your rich to combo a little bit faster. I, I don't really, I'm not that sold on it. I think there's enough fair gameplay to this that really the veil is the only thing I really want. Beyond that, you can take or leave some of the thoughts easy. You can take or leave Strike It Rich if you want to go that way. I don't think it's necessary. And I don't even think if you want the cards, you want all of them. You might be able to bring in only one or two of each of those various cards. Yeah. Uh, sadly, there's a card that I'm, I, I wish uh, Harrison had. I'm sure Harrison wishes to bring in too. And I'm going to reset the flavor text for it if you give me a moment. Pass me from soul to soul, soldier to herder, herder to beast, beast to soil until I'm everywhere. Then pass me those souls. Can you name that card, Drake? Right? Can Anybody I name know? that card? Is this yeah. is this the original flavor text or what is this it? It is the card? original flavor text from a card released yeah. in Mirage. Oh, it better be Cursed Totem. Oh, That's it's a Cursed card Totem, baby. <laughs> yeah. Harrison would love to have a Cursed Totem, but you know, Golgari, he wasn't super prepared for Golgari, but maybe he doesn't need to be since he won game one. Maybe the matchup's good. Easily yeah. won game one, yeah. <laughs> maybe he just doesn't he, even need it. He likes the matchup, you know, like sometimes that's just how it goes. So uh, we've got both players who are sideboard, and I imagine these games will go, as most of the time in Magic the Gathering, post-sideboard games with combo decks, the games go a little slower turn, you know, games two and three. Um, people have answers to things, they know that the jig is up, that interaction comes into play. You can't just, like, mmm, just, like, say instant combo, <laughs> like like Harrison did. Game one was just, like, that on, like, so early. Like, turn three, here's my combo, or turn four, here's my combo. Are we done here? Turns out, we were done here. Um, so we'll see if the one of the remaining, because there's two Golgari deck young of decks in the top four remaining we'll see if christopher can make this a gogari finals tomorrow at 8 a.m eastern standard time here in india <laughs> yeah i mean there's obviously the potential for a yogmoth finals beyond that uh you know it could be two different decks you mentioned the only repeat in this top eight being gogari yogmoth so you mentioned modern looking to be in a healthy spot and i have to agree with you all the matches we saw today for the most part uh looks like traditional magic looks like traditional modern and uh, frankly, it looks pretty healthy. I mean, I don't think there's any any deck that's running over the entire field. I don't think there's anything that feels oppressive in any sense of the word. People were a little bit skeptical about the Fury ban with no grief, but grief we saw plenty today. And honestly, I mean, it was strong. Didn't feel oppressive. Now, maybe I'll be saying a different tune if there's a double grief finals or whatever, what have you. Because here comes the Bolt the Halfling, <laughs> the new Bolt the Bird, Bolt the Halfling. Bird, mm -hmm. long since gone through its time, had a long run. From its original printing in alpha but now an x one's not acceptable in modern so halfling is an x2 the one that's going to get bolted most often is here comes young wolf all right bolt this guy it'll only make him more stronger than you could possibly imagine <laughs> you so, could possibly a tutu is the possibly. highest you could imagine incredible yeah i can't i'm not I don't have, i'm not a very creative kind of guy what's bigger I, than that <laughs> nothing i've never seen anything bigger than a, a young wolf with a puzzle puzzle counter on it um so here uh, John, uh harrison is looking for more mountains he's able to play four of these um surveil lands because he just needs mountains, mountains made, but he's not getting one he's getting a stomping ground so that is communicating a two mana spell Ren and six, it, maybe and be a six, good good board maybe. for Ren and six not a lot of pressure for it it is there the it powerful is. two mana planeswalker you know people uh, call this thing to get banned what happened Ren and six yeah it's just it's just, it's just, he's just a little guy he's just a little guy I, with a tree uh, I think isn't it like a just like two people is like a girl and a tree. It's yeah, like it two, is. It's it not is, one it's, person. It's, it's two fine. people. I mean, I've called Young Wolf Young Pup so many times. I've been watching so many Dune movies recently that I just oh, can't get over it. Yeah, yeah but huh? it, it is interesting. Uh, Chris has a one one, and Harrison has a, a planeswalker that says deal one damage to any target. And Harrison is like, no, thank you. I'll take it. That's not, yeah, that doesn't go your way. I think you just yeah. want to uptick and get your lands. And like you mentioned, yeah. now that we have this established, maybe it's time to start reaching for the, sur the surveil lands. I mean, that's part of the power of this red and six plus fetch line combo in this junk creativity deck that exists today. I mean, if you surveil like an archon to the graveyard, now your persister online, that's bananas. And yeah. otherwise, you can start getting your dwarven mines and things like that, get some one ones, maybe put some blockers in the way. Who knows? Uh, but there's so much utility in just the lands you fetch that give this deck so much extra staying power. For Harrison Canfer, is here comes a young wolf. 
both angles feel bad. Like when you're talking about insurmountable numbers for both the Red and Six and the player, who do you attack? Looks like Chris thinks the player down to 15 goes Harrison Camper. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Chris doesn't have a lot of ways to kill the Ren and Six. He's got a, probably a couple of Chris post sideboard, um, but that's not really what the game is about. Ren and Six doesn't actually super add to the game plan of this deck. It just is so strong for two mana and lets you get past the, I only had I only had three lands. Oh no, I'm so sad. And lets you get past that. So <laughs> uh, Chris does have somewhat of an answer, at least an answer in terms of how you have a conversation a response. His response is endurance uh, for the Ren and Six, but Her let's see what Harrison does with this third mana. This is the, the time is interesting on this endurance. Did we cast this on upkeep? It looks that way. Yeah, it looks that way to me too, which means, uh, you know, I'm not totally sure what we played around there, endurance and upkeep. I trust Chris to be doing the, the smart thing because he looks like... I do too, which is why I feel, I, feel, so, I feel silly. Yeah. I don't know what's, you know, I don't know really what's going on. And here comes Fable of the Mirror Breaker, able to put the Goblin Shaman into play. And of course, can do some other powerful things as well beyond its normal, you know, busted chops that we know about, all the yeah. text on Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Because discarding an Archon uh, to the second chapter is a great way to get your persists up and running. So we'll see if that's on the table. I can't get a great look at Harrison's hand, but I think I saw an Archon. Yeah, so th th this game, this game two for Harrison on the draw is exactly what you want from this deck. Now, all the cards you play played have basically been text box agnostic. He's cast Lightning Bolt, Renin Six, and then Fable the Mirror Breaker. Good These cards. Are like, they, they're, they're just strong cards. They're, you get a lot of value for the amount of mana you put in them. They don't do anything unique or cool. That's kind of one of the great things about <laughs> this deck is that you just are playing strong cards. You don't have to be like Yawgmoth and to have Young Wolves in your deck. Some people don't want to come to a tournament with a one one for one of their deck uh, but we're seeing if christopher can leverage these interaction cards that holistically make for stronger board presences against these generic good start good cards uh, that harrison has brought well looks like we attack with endurance i think this one goes face again which yeah. puts harrison camper down to nine yawgmoth joining the party is a big deal for any you know prospects of uh comboing with dwarven mines so we'll see if second chapter of fable can maybe enable some persist comboing yeah, I think like, yeah, know. I think uh Christopher's probably just gonna like take two. Well now now you're sort of like, do you kill the goblin before it attacks, but then die to dwarven mine? Or do you let it attack, but then you die to um tre uh treasure inspire creativity on the treasure tokens? I guess that means you kill it before it attacks, because that, that that way gets a token for sure. Yeah, you want to be able to kill anything that it would target. So that would yeah. make me if we're going to kill it, I'd want to kill it before combat. And I think you can do that. Yeah, but if you don't want to do that, and it's fine. It's gonna get attacked into Yogmoth. And yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and block and sack and put a counter on it and draw a card. So now are we covered against the treasure? I don't know. I don't. Is there, um, does Chris have any pitch spells that he could use to stop? Uh, I mean, the force of vigor. One force of vigor. One force of vigor, if he has it. I mean, that's what it. makes sense to me. Otherwise, I would have wanted to kill that uh, two to before it attacked, right? Oh, here comes Lightning Bolt. Six yeah, yeah. One, I mean, Yon Yon the Yon Moss certainly doesn't feel good. Lightning Bolt finishing it off. Uh, part of the equation as well. And I think we might actually be... Are we short mana? No, okay, we're not. We got yeah. the Bloodstained Mire, which we're very quickly going to fetch for. Now we can actually grab Dwarven Mine and get a 1-1 one -one. with Yawgmoth off the table. We can actually do creativity now still right now. while yep. picking off the Yawgmoth. So this is actually great sequencing from Harrison, being able to make sure that your opponent doesn't untap with the Yawgmoth, where you could just get punked out in that way. And also still be able to creativity this turn is a big deal. And what a sequence. I mean, from last game where he just grabbed a bunch of surveillance, that was like most of his turns. Here he's cast a spell every turn, right? It's been mm -hmm. uh, Bolt, Ren and Six, Fable, into all this stuff. And here comes an Archon being persisted into play. Thanks to the power of the discard from Fable the Mirror Breaker. And putting the Archon in the yard. So we can look at that one. Return to non-legendary creature from your graveyard to the battlefield with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Lots of Archons in the world of magic. So the Archon of Cruelty, not legendary, able to come into play. And sweeping the board uh, for Christopher Smith uh, is Harrison Camper. No creatures in play for Chris Smith means that he's got an uphill battle. Has four lands now, but needs to make something shake basically right now. Doesn't have very many turns left. Archon will kill very quickly. 
Yeah, and you're seeing here like the Gen Creative deck is a little slower than like Yawgmoth, but like all the cards are generically good. He got to dig through his deck with the Fable. Brennan Six helped him get a land back when Chris wasn't shuffling back in the in the library with uh, Endurance, which is why he cast it in response to the Rin activation earlier on. So like you're seeing how this deck can play all these good stuff cards and eventually combo. Meanwhile, Christopher Smith is playing with Young Wolves and such, but that, that's the price because <laughs> because I mean because Chris got this far, got the quarterfinal, semifinals. Uh, with this deck because the, the, the Golgar Yagma deck is really strong. The only deck in the top eight to be co uh, copies of, two copies of. But what we're seeing here, sometimes things just don't go your way. And it's hard for them to go your way sometimes when you're playing a creature toolbox deck against just good red cards. I mean, you're talking about a combo mirror, but one of the combos has a bunch of great interaction for your combo and its own combo that is similarly yeah. quick. You know, that's that's a tough mixture. And I think is showing itself to be, you know, maybe one of the better matchups. You mentioned that uh, Harrison Camp are kind of light on the sideboard cards this matchup. And I think we're kind of seeing why. This matchup looks pretty good for, for Harrison, if I had to guess, as mm -hmm. this game has played out as it has. And here comes a creativity yeah. for a bunch. And that's going to do it. Chris Smith picks him up. And to the finals goes Harrison Camper and his version of Jund Creativity, a dominant performance. And now I imagine he's got to be rooting to face Yogmoth again after that yeah. performance. And that is still a possibility. So with that, let's take a look. We're going live into game two of our backup feature match featuring May French and I believe her version of uh, Gugari Yogmoth facing down, or no, I'm sorry, it's Donnie Wise and his version of Gugari Yogmoth versus May French uh, on her version of Living End. I got the names wrong there. Let's get that corrected. There we go. Donnie Wise, Gugari Yogmoth, May French, Living End. It's uh, May French up a game here, but Donnie Wise looks ahead in this match, having all these permanents in play as May has two lands. Yeah, May uh, was able to grief away um, a scavenging use, which is a very important card to grief away because that is a real bad time for living in. Problematic, um, I'd say. <laughs> problematic. I'd say it's about only slightly less problematic than Teferi Time Rambler. But we do have a Waker of Waves coming down and seeing what's the future. Because, you know, Donnie yet again had sideboard hate. It got grief, but that's okay. Your opponent's down two cards. So it's kind of like a mind rot for, for zero mana when you think about it. Um, and we're going to see if. May can clutch this game in two, or if Donnie can um, win against this opponent again, uh, playing playing an unfair combo deck against poor little Yogmoth and friends, you know. Poor little Yogmoth, huh? Well, I mean, living is kind of awkward in this particular matchup, right? Because we're talking about a deck in the form of Golgar Yogmoth that can sacrifice its entire board with its main combo piece in response to the uh, the namesake card of Living End. And so here we go. We got Living End for off of Shardless Agent, which is threatening to obviously sacrifice all the board. That's very powerful. But, you know, if we can make a Yawgmoth or something in response, find ways to sacrifice all our creatures, then we can just get them all back and then maybe present a combo beyond that. But right now, it doesn't really look like Donnie's set up to do that. And so May may only be bringing a few creatures back. Uh, looks like Shardless Agent, Grief, and Waker of Waves, the, the targets here. But that could be more than enough if Donnie doesn't have a Yawgmoth or a way to find it. He's going to fetch in response. Is Donnie Wise? Yeah, the other the challenge end. that May is uh, having, I mean, she's already won game one, um, is that uh, Donnie has three Agatha Soul Cauldron's main deck, which is also not something living in play, if a living in player would ever want to see. So, I mean, she's fought through Teferi, she's fought and through Agatha Soul Cauldron. We'll see if she can get in the finals and fight it through tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's something that this deck really. You know, it's obviously not something you want to see. It is really frustrating having to play against main deck graveyard in the form of back of the soul culture. But May has made the run she has made off the back of, yeah, there is a plan for it. And that's really the key to what makes Living End so persistent and so strong in the modern format is no matter what the configuration of hate cards or pieces that you have, interaction you have, Living End can often find a way to maneuver around it, either overwhelm it, line up hate cards, line up answers, those kinds of things of their own in order to secure the victory. Now we'll see if that can happen here as here's a young wolf being court of calling for in response to the living end which is going to come back and if that's true i would be pretty scared of this i think if i may maybe i mean you get a grief to look at the hand but i'm just thinking yogmoth immediately if the best card you could grab here is young wolf yeah no cards dan hope i draw a yogmoth i love it I love yep. it. Donnie Wise set up to do the top decking. We'll see if he can. Because his tournament is on the line. Two draw steps, I believe, before he's dead. Endurance! You're so endurance. into the party! Oh, so close. Oh, endurance, no. man. If that was in his hand and they get endurance in response to living, 
but endurance was like, the you know what? Draw it up. Yeah, that's the way you drop. Yeah. So, you know, Donnie got the one spell he could get because that grief was going to grab nab that um spell anyway, the convoke spell anyway. So, okay. um, court of calling. So, you get you get a wolf, you, it's better than nothing. Um, and now mm -hmm. he's got an endurance in the grip. We're seeing if we can actually just play some like creature combat here in Livian versus Golgara Yagma. Yeah, I mean, now we have to wonder what if we just like do some like blocking and like grow our scavenging goose? Can we like grow it above the waker of waves? I mean, it's ambitious. Yeah, is it impossible? The, I don't probably know. Probably not the first attack you can't grow it as big, but once the young wolves start uh, eating up, chomping on some griefs or um, tutus for three that cascade, Charlotte's agents, then, then, the, <laughs> then this, this the ooze can probably maybe get large enough. Yeah, take a look quick here. Waker of Waves, exactly the impact. I think that one's having a pretty big impact, shrinking the power of yeah. the creatures and the opponents. That makes it pretty difficult to assemble any kind of combo blocks and be able to get out of this. Because, I mean, Waker of Waves is the biggest thing, right? It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Everything else, you can actually just grow scavenging goose big enough to block. And I think that's where May is, like, pausing here, right? Waker of Waves is the only really good attacker. Grief has Menace, so, like, that's, like, okay. But there's, like, some, like, we can grow scavenging goose really big, Thanks to all the creatures you just killed. And then anything that you you sacrifice, you can just grow from there too. And Waker Waves, you get a look at that one. The Uncommon from M21. Creatures upon its scroll get minus one, minus zero. So that one does complicate the battlefield a little bit. It is just a 7-7 seven, seven base. Just large. Largest thing on the battlefield here. Of course, it has its pseudo-cycling ability that it is known for in the Living End deck as well. Yep. As May has really given this attack a lot of thought. It's complicated. There's a lot There's, going on here. You have to do a lot of combat math for being a Living End player, surprisingly. For being a combo player. Yeah, and in the open sea, there's nowhere to hide. So May's like, you know what? I'll alpha attack, all coming at, coming at you. May also <laughs> has an, May also has an endurance in her hand too. So there's endurances all around. Uh, but we'll see if Donnie's endurance can come down here and actually make a profit block against the Waker Waves. It's one, two, three, four, five. Can't kill the Waker Waves with its ability happening, but she still can endurance and maybe blocks herself, grow the ooze. There's, there's two creatures in the yard. Uh, which maybe Donnie wants to keep them in his graveyard because for future living ins, um, that could happen because we only see two revealed there one in the graveyard, one in exile. So eating them comes at a real cost of bringing down the percentage that future living ins will be good for you. Well, I don't, I mean, I don't think you even, you're in a spot to think about future living ins. The problem really is that May has her own endurance. So as soon as you go to start exiling creatures, it's possible if you're tapping mana or whatever that you may could just punch the endurance in response and disrupt the uh, kind of ceiling on the growth of your scavenging ooze. Now, with only two creatures and four green sources in play, that's hard to do right now. You do need Donnie to, like, start tapping some mana for things that are not... Like, if he casts Endurance, is what I'm referring to, obviously, specifically. If he casts Endurance, has only one green up, then now that opens the door for the Endurance from May to disrupt the graveyard, maybe shrink the scavenging ooze, and now it starts to be really grim for your ability to get your scavenging ooze up big enough to start doing some good blocking. And that is what's going to happen here is Endurance. Endurance target you. <laughs> yeah, I need to keep my creatures. I want my scoos to grow. Yeah. And now, if we try to do some blocking, and then after blocks grow the scavenging ooze, then you're going to get nothing. And that's, you know, maybe there's some sequencing to be spoke about here uh, with that specifically, because if we do it first, you know, that doesn't necessarily happen, maybe. You at least have the option to think about it a little bit more. But, you know, this is part of the equation for May's alpha attack as well, and why she was willing to do that. As there goes the the targeting on Orcish Bowmasters. We'll see if May wants to act here. She's thinking about it for sure. Endurance yeah. to the front of the hand. Looks attractive as a play to me. Yeah, it looks nice. Just a double endurance turn, but uh we also have a brazen turn. borrower to reach for as well. Yeah. And like that, I think that's actually where the decision point is for May. Do you mm -hmm. want to start to line up some some bounces? Maybe if the scavenger does start to get big, you just bounce it and who cares? And uh, I can just save the endurance for later for something else more problematic, like a combo. Or, no, I'm sorry, it's just a Sphinx. Okay. Curator so, of Mysteries, yeah. So, yeah. or you can, yeah, the second living in from the Art and Plea is not good. I don't think that's good. There's a living in in here. Looking those cards around. <laughs> yeah, so now the question is just endurance or don't. I think it's pretty straightforward that you want to endurance, I think. It's called endurance, not endontress. So I'm, I'm a fan <laughs> Please of Please make it stop. <laughs> what? This is the last round of the day, so you're going to get your wish in. So. It's, just, it's just psychic damage left and right. She's yeah. really thinking about this one. I, I, I assume the consideration is actually getting Yogmoth comboed. You can disrupt it a little bit, but mm -hmm. how strong is that? You could also keep in your hand for future, like, uh, 
because some of the creatures will die now, so maybe put them back in on Darkness side. I, I don't, I'm not sure, but this sounds good to me. Yeah, it looks like I said, it looks good to me as well. It looks like what you, I think the Scooze is the biggest threat, and really disrupting that, making sure it actually dies right now, is a big part of the equation for May winning this beatdown plan. Uh, I, I do think that she was giving a lot of pause in case there was, you know, is this good enough to disrupt a Yogmoth if drawn? Like, is just getting rid of one of the undying creatures good enough? And I'm skeptical of that. I think the cards that are face up on the board with you now are the cards you really want to reach for. So I really like the way May sequence. And I also really like her giving that thought. I think I would have been a lot more hasty to to slam the endurance than than she was. And I think that maybe isn't a good trait. <laughs> Yeah, you, there's a time and place for everything, as Professor Oak taught us as children. So Donnie oh, was really wanting a Yogmoth that turn, but he drew a card. You could see him kind of slump a bit, and he drew a land and a creature in the form of Dryad Arbor. So he's got that. yeah, they're both creatures. You got a Dryad Arbor, you got an Ignoble Hierarch. Now if you still had your Scoos. Those would be great draws because you could block with them and grow your Scoos, but you do not. So they are not so, good. Played a bunch of zero ones with that Waker Waves, making it hard to hide in the open sea. So. I think May just continues to crash in with everything, I think. Yeah, the the, the the benefit to playing the Endurance as aggressively as we did, too, is it gives another attacker. It's actually pretty good. And yeah. so we're going to manifest that right now as we're laying the smackdowns. We'll see what Donnie Wise comes up with for blocks. Really, I, I'm curious if he tries to do some trading or if he wants to actually, like, obviously the, the Shardless Agent eating is the best block. But after that, things start to get complicated. You know, do you want to just block the Waker of Waves and that start sounds, taking yeah. damage? Those sound great places to start. The only other available option you have is Chump to gain three, which I don't think is correct because you've got that 7-7 seven, seven coming down in the future turns. Or you can double block the Grief and then keep one Young Wolf alive because they're one-twos. But I think you want to keep both Young Wolves open and a third creature to start the Young Moth Shenanigans if you were to draw him. Yeah, but, you know, as you take damage, too, that, that begins to mitigate how much Yawgmoth shenanigans you can even do, which is part of the equation, I think, for Donnie as well. This is some tough attacks and blocks because not just what's on the table, but just what it implies about what draws can get you out. And I think this is really where, uh, you know, Donnie Wise, May French, the players that you see here shine over the, the rest of the field. This is really where you get to exert agency in your games of magic as oh okay we got a fairy macabre huh? extra graveyard hate the macabre the deck An activated ability now we do get rid of okay <laughs> you can see i think we might be right. clearing the way for art play yeah we're just gonna go ahead and kill everything so we went ahead and exiled the creatures out of the yard and now we're just gonna go ahead and cast another live again now that all the creatures are gone and you know that you can clear the field this plays around any drawn yog so we get a look at the i believe time spiral is where this card originally showed up one black, black, fairy, rogue, very rare. I've seen this one cast. Flying 2-2. Two, two, you can, of course, discard it from your hand and exile two car target cards from graveyards. A great free way to interact with cards in graveyard. And uh, also really sweet with living in because you get to bring it back after yeah. you have discarded it to clear your opponent's creatures like we just saw here. The reason it shows up. Not, li not really living in left in May's deck. <laughs> Deep in the deck we go. Yeah. I mean, Donnie did shuffle that living in back a couple turns ago with the endurance so i'm not sure, sure how many livings were in there but yeah that shadow more common as it was shadow more fine you got it All i right. mean it's a fairy doing weird <laughs> stuff it's it's nighttime <laughs> outside and there's a fairy that just means shadow more that's how it works ah yeah. okay that's yeah. a good that's a good recipe i didn't see foolish me I yeah, that's, that's all right that one together we all make mistakes. six power and toughness means it's still lethal we played around yogmoth and i think may playing sequencing things in this way has so made good. it such that there's no draw for donnie yeah. to get out i think he's on actual zero outs and court yeah. calling is definitely not it and shake of the hands may french going to find her way to Harrison Kenfer in the finals. John Creativity versus Living End will be your finals that you will watch tomorrow morning. Of course, that will be the final round of this 10K Modern Showdown. One of those players is going to earn their invite to the NRG Championship, a trophy, a token, and all the goodies that come with that. Both players now qualified for the RC from their performances. So incredible run from both May and Harrison. Very excited to watch that match tomorrow, but that will do it for today. Before we sign off for the day, me and David have to go through through a couple things with you about the rest of the NRG series. So remember, tomorrow the finals, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Be up, be square. Watch May face down Harrison Canfer in the climactic finals of the Modern Showdown 10K here in NRG Indianapolis. And, of course, after that, you'll get to watch the showdown 10K team showdown where all three players will be qualified 
for the uh, Energy Championship at the end of the year. And then after that, there's only one more event in Season 1. That's, of course, St. Louis showing up in June, June 22nd, June 23rd, where you will get a chance to play a 10K Pioneer Showdown. I believe the last of the uh, high-stakes Pioneer events for the year for us is that 10k so if you're a pioneer fan this is your chance to play some high stakes uh pioneer on our championship here 10k pioneer showdown then on sunday you have a 5k modern trial because of course you will have opportunities to play modern this is the nrg series after all and then after that we begin season two which begins the countdown to the nrg championship one of my favorite events of the year our season dates are posted here $65,000 in cash prizes being given out through season two plenty of side events Reese cues and special guests to be present there so show up have a good time even if you just want to play side events plenty of those as well and you can see every single weekend features a 10k modern showdown like the one you have watched here today thank you of course for joining us through today mark your calendars July August September and November for those dates if you want to make it out battle where you're spot on the leaderboard you know all the goodies the trophies the the invites to, to future events the money everything if you want anything in the magic space you can play for it here on the nrg series thank you all for being here remember if you want to support the channel tell your friends like follow subscribe all those fancy things and especially subscribe if you do not want any more ads we brought you day one of nrg indianapolis i'm drake sasser here with david mcdarby Thank you so much for having us to NRG Series and to all of you.